You remember that time I was fired by Nintendo? You remember that, right? I remember that. That was a one of one, a one of ten video. Wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be wild if we were in the room interviewing the people that fired me? Yes, that would be very a very weird thing to have the opportunity to do. Crazy. So I was mm -hmm. overseeing all the social media and influencer mm -hmm. and content work, and then Krista was also leading the work with content creators. Right, right, right. Yeah. Which one of you fired me? <laughs> 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 you can watch that. We actually just interviewed Kit and Krista on our podcast, the Nintendo podcast. Hi, it's me, Wood. The video you're about to watch has me in it, and this is my friend Bob. It. Okay. Anyway, I have a really fun video they're about to watch right now. Wow, what is it? I don't know. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy it. And uh, links down below to the podcast. Okay, bye. Bye. Enjoy. Enjoy the movie. <laughs> so this is my Nintendo Switch, obviously. This is my Steam Deck, but in this box right here, I have the power to create an actual Nintendo Switch Pro. I mean, Nintendo won't give us one, so we may as well do it. So yes, I have already been, uh, actually, hold on a second. What, what, what is this? Oh, it's Tokyo Tree and Sakurako. You know, unlike the Steam Deck, you know what doesn't have really long shipping times? Tokyo Treat and Sakurako, the sponsors of today's video. Tokyo Treat is a monthly Japanese snack subscription box where you'll get up to 20 of the latest, most exclusive, limited edition, and seasonal flavored snacks that are only available in Japan for a limited time. Like in this one, for example, we have even more fun Kit Kats, nuts. Is that a macadamia? That's gotta be a macadamia. Well, good news, it's delicious. But also, if I'm wrong, I can find out in this Hanley booklet that's provided every month and is filled with information and dietary restrictions and everything on every snack available. So this one is Autumn Chestnut. So I was wrong. So this month's Tokyo Treat theme is a Kiba Adventure. The box is filled with limited edition exclusive pop culture snacks found in Tokyo's number one spot for all things manga, anime, and electronics. Akihabara, I've been there. All right, so I've got to try this. What the Fanta? It's blue, but it's a mystery. Oh, that's really good, but I have no idea. There's like a little candy box that looks like a camera. Oh, it's like a little Coke can. Oh, that's so cute. I love Tokyo Treat. So Sakurako, Sakurako, is also a Japanese snack subscription box that you can get monthly. But in this one, you'll get 20 traditional, authentic, and artisan Japanese snacks, including items like Japanese teas and a special tableware. And the tableware this time is another cute little dish. Man. So Sakurako's theme is colors of Koyu. In Japan, Autumn lasts between September and November. So this whole box is filled with autumn themed sweets made from the beloved Japanese local snack makers. So inside you have Japanese maple leaf shaped snacks, like a momiju manju and a momiju cookie, a walnut mochi, and a lot of savory snacks as well, like hand grilled taku senbei. And of course, all of the snacks pair really well with the teas that they send in the box. And this time it's an autumn genmai tea. So if you want to experience authentic Japanese teas, and snacks, use my code BEATEMUPS to get $5 off of your first order. That's a good table snack for the video. <clears throat> now let's talk about the Steam Dock or the Steam Deck Dock. All right, so I already expressed some emotions in the stream, but to reiterate, there's not really even a word for what I am with this thing. It just is what it is. It's a tiny little base that you have to wrap a cord around and on top. I love the options on the back. Obviously, you've got a display. What's it called? Display? Input? Display input? You got a HDMI, you got the power, you got the ethernet, very important, and three USB, right? Random. It almost seems like they had the room to throw an extra one in sideways, so they did. You can really never have too many. My only issue, and I've said it already, is just, just badly designed. Not that I want to compare the Steam Deck to like an A&Neo, because I do prefer the Steam Deck by a long shot. But even the A&Neo had a charge point at the bottom and the top. But also, it just gives you another USB-C to use if you want to charge and use a controller, I don't know. But to not put one at the bottom of the Steam Deck means that there's literally no way to actually dock it. This isn't really a dock, it's more of a base. It happens to have a little USB flippy flappy thing that you can also just 
on top. I mean, it's fine. Not trying to make a big deal out of nothing, even though I am, because that's kind of what I do here. It's just from a design standpoint, it does bother my OCD a little bit. Like this just isn't cool. This doesn't feel like an official thing. It feels like an off-brand thing, but this is straight from Valve. But it does just work. You plug it in, plug the power and the HDMI in, you click to your TV and you're ready to go. You'll just throw straight to the TV and start playing games. It honestly is pretty awesome. And it does turn it into essentially a Nintendo Switch that doesn't suck. No, I'm kidding. Obviously, I don't feel that way, really. You actually could turn this into a Nintendo Switch Pro. In Valve's recent video that they uploaded to their official YouTube channel, whoever owned the Steam Deck they used for that video was emulating Switch on it. Since, as I've already said, you can use Joy-Cons and a Pro Controller on the Steam Deck, and you can download an emulator to play any Switch game, dock it, and put it on your TV, that is a thing you could do. You could create your own Nintendo Switch Pro. But yeah, it does essentially make it become a Nintendo Switch Pro, or really, it just docks the Steam Deck. I'm trying to give it some kind of cute angle for a title, but you get what I'm saying. We took a look at something like the A and Odin recently. Essentially, it's an emulating beast, and I really did love it, and it did come with a dock. However, once you docked it and plugged in another controller, you then had to map those controls, and it, I don't know, it's just, it's too messy. This is great. I even got an Xbox One controller. You just turn on it Bluetooth and you can connect it wirelessly. You can also do full Joy-Con and Pro Controller support with the Steam Deck. The options for controllers you can use on the Steam Deck and the ways you can use those controllers are seemingly endless. It's really cool. But let's talk about this thing because it wasn't all aces. I don't know if I'd have the patience for this thing. It's really cool when you get it working. On my stream, I had a bit of a hard time because for whatever reason, I don't know it was me or the Steam Deck, but it was taking forever to download and patch all of my games. Like literally, it was taking like half an hour to patch one gig for Spider-Man. But once I had everything downloaded and installed and working, we played God of War and blowing God of War up on my monitor and even my TV later on. Holy moly, it looks pretty fantastic. I knew what to expect here. I mean, it looked like a PlayStation 4 was struggling and that's not bad for a portable console being blown up on a TV. You can also, I found out, thanks to Bob, my fellow podcast co-host, go into the Steam Deck's own settings and force it to display at 4K, which does really help when you're blowing it up on a TV, for example. Well, I have a bunch of notes about every game I played, but honestly, God of War, I don't really have any notes. I was just blown away by how smooth the gameplay was, how great everything looked, and this is totally a game that you could play portably on your Steam Deck and then dock it on your TV if you want. Something that had a little bit harder of a time was Spider-Man. That game, by the way, sick on the Steam Deck. But when you blow it up on the TV, even using the Steam Dock, you start to see a lot of faults. Mostly just with the aliasing, like things in the distance get really jagged. And it does throw my immersion a tiny bit while playing, but it's super smooth. Interestingly, when I had it on high settings, it looked way worse than low settings and didn't play very good either. Either. Obviously, the frame rates were relatively garbage. If you're watching me for technical mumbo jumbo, I don't know it, but I would hazard a guess and say that I was just trying to do too much, or rather the Steam Deck was trying to do too much. It had all these fancy effects on to try and smooth the game out and make it look good, and it was just kind of turning it into a clay painting because it couldn't do it. But as soon as I told it to give up and take a breath and uh, go all the way down the low, sure, I mean, the textures weren't great, but it cleared up the image to a point where I would much prefer to play that way and it played better. Also, when I had it on high settings, it was struggling so much that the sound would cut out, especially in uh, cutscenes, the sound would go in and out. And that's obviously horrible. Oh, and I also tried Red Dead. I don't know why, but it, like it was really dark and I couldn't find a way to boost the brightness because I'm dumb. But the game looked good and it played good. I played Red Dead Online and I was like waving at a guy. He went and got a haircut. Yeah, Red Dead Online is pretty fun. But yeah, again, if you don't mind the rough edges, you could play it portably and then dock it. This is the interesting thing with the Steam Deck though. Let's take No Man's Sky for an example. I actually prefer the Switch version of No Man's Sky when it comes to docking it. The Steam 
Steam Deck, it just struggles with it a little bit. It just needs more optimization, like what the Switch version got. Also, my Steam Deck version is very glitchy. I loaded into my game on stream and like the trees were like missing go from the original Pokemon. Obviously, you can play indies on this and it's going to look and play pretty great. Though I will say, you can never get away from that aliasing. Even in Call of the Lamb, the edges do look a little jagged and rough. But again, that's fine. But I really want to test what it can do. So Elden Ring looks pretty good on the Steam Deck and I was interested to see what it looked like blown up on the Steam Deck dock and don't do it. I don't know if I was doing something wrong. I tried bouncing around all kind of resolutions in the Steam's inner settings, everything from low to high to native and auto. And then I even tried messing with the settings in the game itself and putting it to low, putting it to high. It didn't matter. It looked disgusting. It didn't play that great either, but it just, it just, it just uh, looked to uh, there. Mm -hmm. But then I realized something really cool about the Steam Deck. You guys remember that Steam at one point had the Steam Box? I'm pretty sure that was essentially something you hook up to your TV and you can stream your Steam games to your TV. I always thought that was really cool, but they did away with it and they sold them out for a nickel and didn't support it. You can do that now. This essentially replaces the Steam Box and also gives you a handheld. And I loaded up Cyberpunk and it was garbage. It was a dumpster fire. I don't know what happened that first time I loaded it up, but it was a nightmare. And I thought, oh boy, this doesn't work. But then I tried loading up Hunt and that worked actually. It looked pretty sick. It looked pretty great. The issue that I have is I have an ultra wide monitor for my PC, the big Samsung bad boy. And when I'm streaming to my Steam Deck and then blowing it up on the TV, for some reason it still opens as my ultra wide. So I tried to mess around with resolutions, but then when I tried to make it the resolution of my TV, that would blow the resolution up on my monitor and in turn it would stream to me the terrible resolution. So it looked horrible and again, it was pretty unplayable because for some reason too, once you get those bad resolutions, it starts to play bad, starts to get lag. If you have a 4K monitor and a 4K TV, this will probably be seamless. Because that works so well, I went back to Cyberpunk by the way and the next time it was fine. It was great then. No lag, looked fantastic. I mean, Cyberpunk's a really pretty game and uh, even though I was streaming it, I was getting a pretty solid idea idea of it. It was great. I mean, it was really great. The only thing I'll say there that I have a fault with personally is just the fiddling. It was a lot of fiddling. Fiddling with resolutions here, fiddling with resolutions on my PC. Then like one time it didn't work. And then the next time it did work. A lot of you watching at home are probably big brain and probably already have the answer to that. I'm just kind of a casual gamer. I just want a Steam Deck and I maybe I would want to dock it and I really don't want to have to deal with all of that. But yeah, it feels like I've done a lot of complaining about the dock. I'm really not. I think it's great. If you want to dock your Steam Deck, this is the best you can do. The issue is that it's a PC and PC has issues. It's why I do lean towards my Switch still. You know, when I got the Steam Deck, I gassed it up. I said, I think it's going to take away my Switch time. And for a little bit there, I was really trying to use it and I was trying to get into it. I ended up whenever I wanted to play something with no mess, no fuss, and just knew that it would load up and play, I would just go to the Switch. But yeah, if you're an avid Steam Deck user and you have no issues figuring out any technical bugs you might have to come across or playing games on it in general have not presented a problem to you at all, and you're thinking about getting something to dock it, this will surprise you. It honestly will. There will be games that you will dock, you will be amazed, but then there will be games, depending on what you're playing, like Elden Ring, where you'll be a little less amazed and you might just stick to playing it portably. Or if you want to stream games from your PC, that's pretty sick. There's a lot to love here. I think for me, I'm going to stick to playing my PC games portably on the Steam Deck, and then I'll keep using my Switch for everything else and my TV playing. If this video helped you at all, it's a ton of fun to make. Hit like, leave a comment down below with if you have a Steam Deck, if you've been playing your Steam Deck, and if you're interested in getting the Steam Dock, please make sure, oh, I forgot I had freaking, I mean, you guys probably are happy I wasn't munching the whole time, but I was literally just thinking I'm hungry. Yeah, subscribe if you're new. We're on the other side of halfway to 2 million, you know? If I start making better videos, I can do it. Maybe, I don't know. Bye.